coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thanks for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today. And if you're watching on the uh, Blue Collar Leadership YouTube channel, thank you for for that too. And uh, there, there's going to be three of us today. Most of the time, it's just going to be two. We got uh, my wife Rhea Story is going to be uh, leading this interview with Miss Danielle Smythe, and we're really happy to have her on here. So thank thanks for joining us, Danielle. Yeah, thank you. And we just saw you a few days ago up in St. Peter's, Missouri, where, where you, you work for the city of St. Peter's. How was that? I love it. This is this. It's a very good um, it's a very good place to work. And I, I love all the people that I work with. I love what I do. So um, and a lot of it has to do with you guys coming and visiting us the first time. Yeah. So so I always ask, how, how do you how do you know us? And that probably, <laughs> that's probably the answer. Right. Was that yeah. your first exposure to us or how, how do you know us? Um, well, Bill Malik, he actually started this um, lead the way thing for our city. And um, and then he brought you guys in and we listened to you speak um, in 2022, I believe. And um, and that's kind of when our lead the way journey started. And that's when I started working on working on me and working on helping other people. Yeah, that's awesome. And we we came over and uh, saw where you worked. We toured around. We were over there again uh, this past Wednesday when we saw you guys, but we didn't actually go out to the where you literally worked this last time. But the first time we did, you guys were working when we came out and talked to you. Oh, yeah. No, that it's very uh, chaotic. It can be very chaotic, but it is very fun. And it's uh, just knowing that stuff. I remember nerding out whenever I first started that job and like telling everybody how to recycle and what's not recyclable and it's it's very interesting for sure okay and you were on the front row when we were speaking because we what happened was uh for, for the listeners uh back in 2022 uh bill malik that danielle's talking about he he was the uh, incoming city administrator at that time he was about to take over a few months later and he has now and uh at that time he ordered 900 books and brought us up to speak for eight hours and this last time uh they ordered another 300 books actually last year, but they scheduled our visit this year. So we were able to come up and talk for two hours. And a lot of you volunteered so 25 people or so 22, 25 of the top leaders had to be there. And then there was like 40 of you guys who volunteered. So you volunteered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, no, I, what caused I, you to- and I, we got um, some new people that had started after the, your guys's first initial visit and then yep. they came and they volunteered to come to this second visit and I I loved watching some of them like because they have made like very like just tangible growth and it's like it was so cool kind of like looking around the table while listening to you guys and like watching them be so invested and then talking to them the next morning and then hearing how invested they were and like how much they just loved how you both spoke and I, it was awesome. It was really cool. Okay. So what did they seem to did? So they like the, they have probably never been into that type of talk since they're new to your organization because most blue collar companies don't do anything like that. So that was their first time. Mm-hmm. So what did they have to say? If you can share it. Oh, they loved it. I mean, they were eating it up. They loved like all the different aspects, like how you guys hit on, like how you hit on the books and how you hit on like how you guys got to where you are. Because I think for at least a couple of them, it's really hard for them to like, like at least in book club, their questions are like, well, you know how it's easy to write this stuff. It's easy to say this stuff, but it's not easy to practice. And it's like, after hearing your guys' stories, they were like, well, you know, well, they made it through X, Y, and Z and they're doing phenomenal. And they're speaking like they, like it's easy and I'm like well yeah because if once you get the ball rolling it can be but I mean that they're not saying that it is easy they're saying that it's going to be tough <laughs> yeah it's 
it's real tough and you can't ever stop. That's that's the main thing. You just got to keep going. So so Rhea's sitting there patiently waiting. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to excuse myself so she can get me out of the way. But then you guys, you know, I'll be back at the, at the tail end, but I'll be in the background watching, taking notes and that that, that kind of stuff, because I'm sure you're going to teach me something, Danielle. And uh, <laughs> I really, really appreciate you you being on, though, because all we're doing is looking for people like you, hungry for personal growth and development who want to help us help other people. And, that, and that's what you're doing. I mean, you're the, the primary thing you're doing being on here is helping other people because your your story, who you are matters. And there's somebody who they don't need to hear my story or Rhea's story or somebody else's story that they need to hear your story. So so thank you very much for doing that. And this is something you can always share with someone. You know, if you if you're trying to get a promotion or if you were ever trying to get a job somewhere else. I mean, we, we hope you don't. St. Peter's <laughs> loves you and you seem to like them, but it's something you can always have out there. There's value for it, you know, for you personally, or you may, you may meet people and you ain't got time to spend an hour talking to them, telling them your story, but you can send them a link to this. And so it'll be something you can put on your uh, LinkedIn profile. You can tag it to your features and, and then anybody goes to your LinkedIn profile can, you know, learn, learn a lot about you and, and you can help people through your story. So thank you very much. And, and I'll see you at the tail end. Thank you. All right. So now it's just the ladies. This is pretty cool. I know. Um, thank you, Danielle. You know, what's cool is I, you are the first female that we've had to interview on the Real People Getting Real Results um, playlist on our YouTube channel on a podcast. So thank you for being willing to come on and um, invest your time in helping share your story so that other people can can learn and grow as well. Yeah, I appreciate that. It it makes me happy to to kind of hear that I am like a, a female in the blue collar workforce, like trying to help others. So that's that's really awesome, and I appreciate you guys inviting me to do it. Absolutely. So tell the listeners exactly what what you do as a recycler. Give us a little bit more because I've gotten the privilege of talking with you off and on over the past couple of years, and just hearing your growth and, and hearing, you know, some of the, the things that you've learned how to do there at St. Peter's. And so share with us just a little bit more about that. Um, so initially I came in and it was just like, I was strictly a recycler. I, um, so like as a recycler, you learn how to sort the plastics into different bins and like what products go out and what products don't. And so, I mean, and that's kind of varied ever since, um, ever since I've been there. Like initially we would sort um, certain numbers that we don't now because there's no, um, there's no buyer for it just yet, but right. eventually we'll get there. And, um, and right now we're, uh, we sort natural, uh, which is kind of like uh, milk jugs and that kind of thing, you know, it's a number two. And then we have the color bin, which is also number twos, but it's just colors. And then we have PET, which is um, clear plastics. And then we have aluminum and tin and glass. And uh, so that we would just hand sort that. We would just flick everything into these bins by hand. And um, wow. And then, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's very uh, physical. It's a very physical, dirty job. But um, it was really cool whenever I first started because I was like, oh, man, I could go to family functions and be like, no, you're doing this all wrong. This is not <laughs> like <laughs> I nerded out on it essentially. And um, and then there was the moment where they came to me and they had asked, "Well, Danielle, would you like to learn the Baylor?" And oh my gosh, did I think that I nerded out on like learning how to recycle? No, I absolutely nerded out on how to bail. And uh, <laughs> well, what? Tell me, tell us what a Baylor is. So the baler is like, we fill these bins up with all these plastics or this aluminum or this, um, whatever the, the product is, we fill these bins up, right? Well, then they get full and then you have to drain that out and you have to put it on the, so it goes down the 800 belt and then it goes up and into the baler. Well, the baler is pushing it in every direction and then it makes like this tiny cube and it wraps it around, depending on whatever product you're bailing, it has like so many wire ties. And um, like if you're bailing trash, there's only like six wire ties. If you're bailing pet, there's 12. And um, and then you just have this cube of everything that someone just hand sorted. And I was like, this is amazing. Like I, <laughs> I 
love that. I love going and telling people like, I know how to operate a baler. And, uh, and so after that, I, uh, they asked me if I would like to RSR and that essentially is on the tipping floor side, which is the transfer station. And, um, and like, I can't, I, at that point I couldn't operate a loader or anything like that. So it was like, I was just directing traffic and that part was really cool too, just to kind of, um, I don't know, just to kind of see everything. But then they were like, well, Danielle, would you like to operate the loader? And I'm like, Hmm. I would. So it's just like, as, as long as I've been there, I've slowly started to learn all this equipment. And I didn't, I didn't know I had like this little, I guess, like essentially like a little boy inside of me where I'm like, (laughs) put me in all the machines, let me operate everything. And I, I just love that. Like, I love that one, I love that they let me, but two, I love, I love what I do. I love going to work and being and doing all the things that I'm there for. Yeah. Well, what's kind of cool is that um, you've been growing in that competency, right? I mean, you've taken on new jobs and new roles and learning to do so much, but you've also really just, I mean, I remember the first time when we did get to go walk out to see where you were working and you were on the line, but what was cool is like, you were just, you have such a positive personality anyway. And like you were smiling and just like (laughs) making it happen. And Uh, That was pretty cool. But then you came and heard us speak that first time a year and a half, two years ago or whatever. And then I think it was maybe a couple weeks for you and I talked like on the phone Mm -hmm. and you've been on fire. Like you've been in what Matt calls sponge mode, like reading books and growing and doing book studies. Talk a little bit about your journey through that, because that is one of the things that's impressed me is you're growing in competency and skills, but you're also growing in character. Oh yeah. No, I mean, there's, I, um, I have read so many books and honestly, like whenever the last time I read a book, it had to be high school. Like I was never any kind of reader. I never, even in high school, I was like, they're forcing me to read these books. Like this is not not having a good time. But uh, when you guys came, it was, it was how you spoke or what you said. I don't know what it was, but I was just like, man, that, that is really awesome. And it's like, you hear somebody's story and you're like, well, well, how did they do that? Like, how did they overcome all these things instead of like reverting back to like the easier way of doing things and like going back to being like, well, you know, X, Y, and Z happened to me. So I'm just going to let that define me. And Mm. I'm just, I'm just going to be nasty to people or I'm just going to treat people this way because that's how I was treated. And, um, so whenever I heard you guys speak, I was like, okay, you know, well then Jim, Jim McEwen, he, uh, he started book club. And I honestly, I do not remember what the first book we read was, but I was like, man, this is really awesome. Like, you know, you're reading these books or whatever, whatever book they might be. And then you just kind of like highlight, you know, whatever, whatever is like, hitting you at that point. And it's kind of funny whenever I look back at some of the books that like we did read in the beginning versus the books that we're reading now, because I'm not going to lie to you in the beginning. I was like highlighting all the negative stuff. Like, no, this is exactly what I needed to hear, you know? And then, and then now it's like, no, I, all the negative stuff. I'm like, no, there's mm -mm." like, you'll, I'll highlight all the positive stuff. And then I'll be like, well, you know, because of whatever. And I think that that's really cool because I have slowly watched my mind change from like negative or um, not even necessarily negative, like, because I am a very happy individual. I do smile and everything, but it's just kind of like, it's really cool to just to visually like read the different kind of mindset that I've, that I've come from, I guess is what I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um, And you know, we've had a couple of conversations, so I've gotten to see some of that growth, but your journey, but even before you got to St. Peter's has not been easy. So share as much or as little as as you want to with that. But um, I know that I've heard when I've heard some of your, you know, history leading up to this. And that's to me, what I think is inspiring to people is like you said, knowing that people don't always get a, a head start in life, but they can still go on and be successful. So talk a little bit about that as much as, or as little as you want to share. Yeah. Well, um, so I, I mean, work wise, I started at, um, 
at Big Boys. It's a restaurant that was in Wright City. And that was actually my first job. And whenever I did that, like, you would think, like, okay, someone with this personality, with this smile and everything, they could be <laughs> a server. No, that's completely wrong. Do not have, do not believe that. Because that was my first job and my first demotion. I was <laughs> a server to a bus girl. And that, that took a big hit on me. <laughs> <laughs> funny and my mom I got so emotional my mom went up and she she defended me and she shouldn't have she should have just let it be but it so needless to say I didn't stay there very long um <laughs> but, but then I've I've worked at a nursing home I've worked at a daycare I love both aspects of that because I mean children are just so funny they're ruthless but they're funny and um they kind of make you see things differently but also mm. with the too like they've lived their life and they are just kind of like they're kind of trying to help you but then at certain ages you're like I don't want to hear that like I know that you're telling me it's going to get better my grandma's favorite saying was um if I would ever get hurt she'd be like well it'll get better before you get married and do you know how angry that would make someone <laughs> someone at a smaller age you're like of course it will, but that's not what I want to hear. I want you to come. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I did that. I worked at, um, I worked at a where like a grocery store warehouse for seven years before I came to St. Peter's. So, um, I got a little bit of equipment stuff there. Like I learned how to operate a tugger and, um, and a machine wrap, um, thing. So it could just wrap around the pallets really fast. Um, I did like that job, but that's kind of where a lot of my um, negativity and like realizing that like that it's it's hard to be in the workforce and like be around all these different personalities, all these different generations and everything. And so I ended up leaving there and uh, found it to found St. Peter's. And uh, that was it was it was it's been very good. It's been very good considering all the all the other things being demoted and all that. But um, besides that, like with home and everything, I mean, there's just been a lot of, uh, a lot of things, you know, um, mm -hmm. my mom, she was a single mom and uh, she had three kids. It was me and my two younger brothers. And I mean, they, we all have different dads, which isn't a bad thing, but they, um, they all have different, they all have their different quirks, you know, and um, sure. I think with like reading all this material and everything, it's definitely, um, it just definitely helps, you know, I mean, it makes you kind of self reflect and be like, okay, well, this is why I do that. This is what I need to change or what I need to stop or start, you know, to fix or correct it. Like, cause I have a six year old and his name's Cooper. And uh, I mean, he, it's just really funny, like watching him do things. And like, there was one day we had book club and uh, I forgot exactly what it was, but Cooper did something. And I'm like, Oh, where'd he get that from? And I remember talking to Jim McEwen and I'm like, why did he do that? And he's like, huh, I wonder. And then I took it home for a couple of days. Like, why did Jim say that? And like, he didn't say exactly that, but he said something along those lines. And then I'm like, Oh my gosh, Cooper got that from me. Oh. <laughs> he picked that bad habit up from me. <laughs> and it's so, it's so like humbling, you know, you're like, okay, well, why is my child acting this way? And then you're like, hmm, oh, I'm that guy. He, he did that because I do it. And it's, it's, it's just funny. It's funny because now I realize the things that like, that I was doing because of things that I've either went through or done myself, you know, and then it's like mm -hmm. watching him. It's just, it's so funny. <laughs> I always think that, that you learn a lot about yourself, um, okay. you know, when you're in that parenting role, because it raises that level of awareness. Like you say, you're like, Oh, I can see that reflection of me mm -hmm. and that little person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He just, He's very funny and like his school actually like he's he's a kindergartner and um, his school is actually like their focus is on the seven habits of highly effective kids. So mm -hmm. 
only am like I growing myself and like working on myself, but he is also like, he'll be like, hold up, you need to take five. Like, and (laughs) it's just really funny because like now that we both have like the same foundation, we kind of can course correct each other. And I know that's funny because he's six and I'm 29, but it's, it really does actually happen. Like more, sometimes more than I'd like, but then also it's gotten better. Like, because we both know what we're, what we're doing and how to speak to each other and how to communicate. And I think it's Mm. really cool because he talks to me different than he talks to like, say his dad. And I really enjoy that. Like I, I'm like, okay, you know, he's being very like open and honest. I might not like what he says, but at least we have that thing where it's like, there's no secrets. Like I know everything. He lets me in on everything. Like whenever he has a problem at school, he'll tell me when he gets in the car. I don't know if he does that with his dad. I don't, think that he does but if he does it's not on the same depth as like when he's talking to mom and I really I really love that you know it's like you guys now have kind of a a common language of based on leadership and and personal growth and those values on that and boy Danielle I wish I wish I'd known about this stuff at six years old I mean that's like man he's gonna have such a head start oh yeah so, I mean, it definitely is really, like, it's, it's just really cool. Like, I mean, there's so many things that, like, I mean, with myself, like, I know that, like, I'm, I'm a very happy individual, but there are moments where, like, I can be very angry or, like, I, I'm quick to be angry. And so it's, like, whenever he spilled milk before, I'd be like, oh, gosh. And it's it was, like, a learned trait because that's what my – like my mom would do or whoever I was with would do. They'd be like, Oh gosh, why did you spill that? Uh, like mm. no about to have accidents. And, um, and so he would do that. And then I remember the first time after like stuff started resonating with me that he spilled something and he's like looking at me like, Oh gosh. And like, not that I would do anything crazy, but like, I mean, I definitely would raise my voice. Like, of course you'd spill that, you know? And, uh, and I didn't. And he was like, and I'm like, yeah, no, Coop, it's fine. And I was like, it's just spilled milk. And he's like, but it's all, it's it, it could have got on the on the TV stuff. And I'm like, that's okay. And then in my head, I'm like, he's right. It could have got on the TV stuff. But I, <laughs> I changed my my tone or anything. I'm like, no, no, you're fine. Everything's fine. And uh, it was just funny. I'm like, it wasn't funny, but it was at the same time because it's like mm. it just showed that. It, it's it's really cool whenever you have moments like that and you're like okay so it is resonating because sometimes I think I feel like I wonder I'm like okay you know I'm reading this stuff but is it really clicking am I really doing anything with it because I mm-hmm. like especially at like work and stuff and like being around people that um, not even I don't know people that just like are trying to better themselves and it's like you're like okay well are you am I and so whenever you have those moments you're like that's really awesome I'm really proud of myself I'm really doing something (laughs) so you're saying this was after you started going through like the book studies at work and and you've read a lot of books aside from the book studies you guys are doing at work but you're saying after you started going through the book studies you're you're parenting differently oh yeah Oh, yeah, for sure. There's so many things like, I mean, because before, so whenever I was little, like my mom would never, never think about buying us light up cartoon shoes, like over her dead body, would she buy us those? And so everybody at school is rocking these light up shoes with characters on them. And she's like, absolutely not. She's buying whatever, whatever's in at that point. And, um, And so I picked that up. And so with Cooper, I'm like, you're not wearing light up shoes. I didn't get to wear light up shoes. You're not wearing cartoons. And, um, and so then it's like, I'm like, Danielle, like, you're not even letting this boy express himself. And it's kind of funny because old habits don't die fast. And so I Mm. told my mom that I let, I let Cooper dress himself now and it can get crazy to not (laughs) Let me fool you. It can get crazy. Sometimes I'm like, can we, can we think about this one? Can we, can we talk this out? And he's like, no, this is totally fine. I'm like, fantastic. That's great. I love that for you. But like, I told my mom that I was doing that and she's like, 
that ain't happening at my house. I'm like, I'm confident that it's not going to happen at your house. <laughs> so it's like, I think it's funny because I'm like, okay. Like, and I read one book some time ago and it just said that like, you know, let your kids figure out, like, figure themselves out. Like, what is their style? What is their like love language? What is their, you know? And I feel like a lot of that, like, a lot of parents chop off right in the beginning, like right when they're trying to find themselves or right when they're trying to like um, figure out what they even like, like, you know, uh, with Cooper's dad in particular, like Cooper does baseball right now. He's doing coach pitch and he's doing karate. But with his dad, it's like he, um, he can't, he can't do soccer. Cooper wants to do soccer. Cooper's talking about soccer, but his dad hates soccer. So he's like Mm -hmm. trying to tell him like, you're going to hate it. You're going to have to run a lot. It's going to be hot. Da, 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 da. And it's like, but why? You didn't even let him try once, you know? Like, what if he loves soccer? What if he's going to be fantastic at it? What if he gets out, like, and goes to college for soccer? You don't know. And I think it's just, you don't really realize it, but I feel like the parents are the first bully. And I know that I've, I've actually read that somewhere, you know? Like, the parents are kind of like the shapeshifter and, you know, those little kids are going to grow up to be big people. And I mean, you kind of want a world with kind, caring people instead of like, oh, well, you shouldn't wear that because it's controversial or, oh, you shouldn't eat that because those fish were raised in a, like a farm or some, some weirdness. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So what I hear you saying is that you're learning to ask him questions and just help him think through decisions for himself. Yeah. And I mean, and he does. And he's actually very like the stuff that they have them learning now compared to what I I, I had like an hour long nap in kindergarten. They have like a 15 minute rest. So it's like <laughs> it's just, it, I mean, granted, they're learning different things in school anyway than I learned. But it is just it's just kind of funny to like look back at like my childhood and see like you're not wearing those light up shoes. And then me being like, you're not wearing those light up shoes. And it just kind of trickling down and then being like, Nope, we're not doing that anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna let you figure out who you are, you know? And I think that that's, it's really cool for both of us. Oh, I love that. So talk a little bit about um, the book studies, because you and I have had a lot of conversations about the, not only the books that you're reading there at work and your book studies, but also the other books. I mean, you've read a you read a lot of my books and I know you've read some other books because you and I had a conversation about a book you recommended to me. So I want to get back to that. But before we get there, talk about um, how you guys do your book studies there at Recycle City and kind of some of the um, impact or changes you've seen as as the team over the team as a whole. So we um, Jim McEwen, like I said, he started the book studies and then he started off with a few of the Mac books. And then we went to a couple of different ones and we've been, we're on your book right now, the the ladder of influence. And it's just, it's really funny to watch it evolve. Like, so initially there was like maybe five of us that were in there and then people started coming back from being injured. And then we got three new people. And um, there was always just like certain people talking like, they would just be like, oh, pass, oh, pass, you know, or whatever. Well, then as it progressed, people started talking more. And then it just, it got real, um, it got real fun. And the team got more involved and more, um, they all started speaking, you know. And you can always tell, like, when something's going on with the team or when something's going on with someone. Because, mm-hmm. like, if I pass, that's, I'm having a bad day. Do not let <laughs> sit in that like if I say pass that I didn't not learn anything but I definitely am having a rough morning so like definitely like it's just it's really funny like and then there's certain people I know that when you guys had came um this past week that there was one person that was like I've never been paid to do this I'm not doing that because why am I going to sit here and open up to these strangers I just want to do pretty much my my eight and hit the gate and right. uh, And it's just so funny, like, because you see that when they first started versus like, you know, now it's like they're letting you in, you know, and everything's just kind of like lighthearted and fun. And uh, it's just really cool. It's been really cool to watch. Like since I've been there for the start of it to now, it's just been really cool to watch everybody kind of like grow and figure everybody out. Like 
So like I said, if I don't talk, they're like, okay, well, let's hover around Danielle and let's make her switch her mindset or let's talk it out with her and see what's going on, you know, so see if we can maybe help resolve that situation. And I think that's really cool. I, and I've never done a book club at work ever either. I've never mm. self-help book before this. So it's like just seeing me and then seeing how everyone else has grown, even if it's, even if it's small, it's just really cool. Like there's this one person that's been there for a very, very long time. And, um, watching her and like having this moment with her and with Jim and watching certain things click and just it it's really cool because like you say you know you get somewhere and you stay there for a long time or not necessarily like you say but like most people say you you stay there for a long time and you start getting into these negative habits negative ways you know and just seeing that click with somebody that's been there for a while and mm. watching that change it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. And just to, to see that growth and that transformation. Right. And, and what is cool is that when Mac and I got to go there, you visit you guys this past week and your department was one of the ones we got to actually visit. And aside from speaking to the overall group, but it was so cool. Cause when we walked in, I mean, you guys were just talking and talking with one another and um, the, the positive energy just in the room was <laughs> so phenomenal like you can just see that um you guys as a team feel like a family almost oh yeah oh yeah well and there's there's most of us actually do talk like off of the clock like when we're at home you know or when we're out and about we'll we'll actually go do things together and um I just think that it's really funny because it is such a small group there's only nine recyclers and I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. And uh, then there's like three other or maybe just two. I don't really know. Two or three other generations. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny because you would think like with such a tight, small group that like having all those generations, there would be like a lot of conflict. And don't get me wrong. There can be some days, you know, there, there are a lot of differences. But it's like we have figured out kind of like how to talk to each other, how to work with each other, how to like we know each other very well, like for being in such a small room. And like, after like learning certain things about each other, we're like, okay, well, so-and-so does this because of that, you know, or mm. they're, they're changing that and we can see it. And it's, and it's just, it's kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. So talk about some of the books. Um, and there's one that you recommended to me, and I know you've read several. Talk about some of the things that you've learned um, kind of going through the book studies and, and how you're applying that. So like with there has I have actually read a lot of books. Like I said, I, I'm very impressed with myself. I'm like, how am I still doing this? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did. So I can't remember which one I read first, but I did read this Girl Stop Apologizing. And um, a while back, I had actually applied to go to the water plant for mm -hmm. St. And um, whenever I went over there, they let us kind of like sit in on the book study and everything. And I, I recommended that to them as well. And so it's Rachel Hollis, Girl Stop Apologizing. And um, in that one, I just kind of realized like that I don't have to be so sorry about doing it. Like if I'm in the grocery store, I'm like, okay, well, I don't have to, like, I mean, I don't have to, I, I don't know. It's just kind of like, and I can't really think of anything specific from that one, but I just remember whenever I read it, I was like, that is really cool. Like I remember one specific thing from it where it was like, okay, well, if a, if a woman, a female gets into like a big position, you know, they're like, oh, girl boss, girl, um, girl leader or girl whatever and it's like why are you putting girl in front of it when a man does anything spectacular they're like it's it's just boss it's just lead it's just whatever and it's like I mean at first I was kind of humbled I was like because I was like okay well I kind of did like the girl boss girl whatever but then I'm like I had to rethink it I'm like but they don't do that when it's a man. And so it's just kind of like she put a light on like, you know, women can really do anything. I mean, they can load, they can run a loader, they can operate a baler, they can, they can jump in a skid steer and be a better operator than a man. And it's just kind of like, I feel like that's where I was like, you know what? 
I, I'm a woman in a man's industry, but that doesn't mean that I'm like less than or that I, I can't do it. Like just because I'm a female, like, and I, I'm very stubborn in that aspect now. Like, I mean, I was before anyway, because um, like I said, my mom was a single mom. And so watching her at like, that's probably where I got my work ethic from in all reality. Like, I mean, she was just, she's just strong. She's, she worked hard for everything and for me and my brothers to have whatever we needed, you know? And so I definitely give credit to her, but also at the same time, I'm like, Hmm, that book really like opened up my eyes that like, I, I can do anything like, and that it just kind of started the fire. And then, um, one day we, I went to the, I went to the bathroom and, and uh, we have a paper line at work. And so we separate paper from cardboard and one lady, she uh, pulled this book off and she set it in the bathroom. And so, I mean, if we find anything cool, it usually ends up in the bathroom because that's where our lockers are. And uh, I picked the book up on a Saturday and it was called No, uh, Our Butt Prints in the Sand No More. And it was by Sam Glenn. And I loved that book. I would read it like in the car if I was like the passenger princess in anybody's vehicle. And I mean, I would just read it wherever I had a chance. And it just was like hook, line and sinker. Just everything in there was really, it, it was really good. And we read a little bit of it um, during book club. And I think a lot of people got a lot out of it because he's also got some like religion. And we have a couple of people in our group that are very, very, very religious compared to like the others. And mm -hmm. um, it was, that book was really good, I think, for all of us. Yeah, uh, you've just, how many, just ballpark, how many books have you read in the last year and a half? Hmm. <laughs> um, I'm looking at at least eight right here, but I know, oh, that wow. oh, at least 10, at least 10, because I know two of them are at work and I've dabbled in a couple of them, but then, I mean, I do have spurts where like I have to not read because if I read it in the mindset that I'm in at that point in time, like I'm not going to absorb anything. And so it's like, I know that about myself. If I'm just like aimlessly reading, I'm nothing's going to resonate. So I kind of have to like take like breaks and then I have to read again. Like whenever I feel like I'm ready, like mentally and, um, I've had, I've had a few of those and sometimes they can be long spurts, but I just, I'm like, I don't want to just read through this book aimlessly. Like I want to, I want to absorb it. I want to hear what they have to say. And I've even gotten a book that I found on um, TikTok, which I'm showing my age, but um, it, <laughs> it was called um, Emotional Intelligence 2.0 and it makes you take a quiz. And I'm really mad at myself because right after I took the first quiz, because it makes you take two quizzes. So you take one before you read the book and then you take and it kind of gives you like a ballpark of like where your emotional intelligence is. And then you take this quiz after you read the book. And I've I'm in the, the limbo area of I took the first quiz and then I read part of the book and I haven't went back to the book. And I'm really uh. mad. <laughs> Man, I really want to know if I've done anything, but I, I can't re I can't finish reading it without like getting back into that mindset. Mm -hmm. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really mad at myself, but at the same time, it is really cool. Like, to be able to do that, like take a quiz and figure out if you've even grown at all after reading it. Yeah, absolutely. I remember um, one conversation we had, you were talking about some of the growth that you felt after reading some, um, you know, reading some books or going through some of our books even. And then you were like recommending them to some of your family members and just, um, you know, like it's easy for me to see you like you've been on fire, like you're soaking up. <laughs> reading and growing and then but what's cool is you're turning around and passing it on to other people mm -hmm. yeah well and I and I really like that too like I know that like whenever Jim when he reads something and it makes him think of think of me like if even if it's not the whole book even if it's just a page that's kind of when he's like okay well I'm gonna copy this page and I'm gonna give it to Danielle and uh I just I really like that because I I like whenever people are don't just stop with themselves. Like, I mean, I know that it's it's hard work to work on yourself, but then like whenever it comes to like helping other people, like 
that's kind of even as a kid that's kind of something that's just been there like it's not it's not been like this aggressively like forward like oh well I'm gonna give you this book because I think that this would resonate with you but like even as I was growing up it was just kind of like you know helping people helping animals like so now that I have like tangible words that I can have in a book and give it to somebody or give like a quote like if I'm like oh okay so and so is having a bad day because of whatever it is like I can just be like oh this quote made me think of you and like whenever you do that you can just see people like smile like oh you you were in your free time and you thought of me and I think that that's really cool because I when it happens to me I'm like oh that's a <laughs> It makes you kind of like just real emotional. Like, oh, you in your free time, you were doing whatever you were doing and it made you think of me. And it's, I like to pass that because when you see the emotion of it behind it, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things I always like to think of being a river instead of a reservoir, right? Like, like share, share some wisdom and insights. Yeah. Um, that's that's the cool thing. Yeah, well, and then one of the things, because I think it was you that said it, or maybe it was maybe it was something that you had quoted from someone, and I'm gonna butcher it. And <laughs> but I'm I, I remember it like so clear, and I brought it up a few times at book club, but it was like something along the lines of um if it bubbles up, don't let it bubble out or something like that. And yeah, that's <laughs> I, I say just because it bubbles up doesn't mean it has to bubble out. <laughs> and I love that. So like I share it all the time. Like if somebody's just like losing their mind, I'm like, hold on. Just because it's bubbling up does not mean you have to do anything with it. Keep that there. Let it simmer. <laughs> Something. But no, it, it is really cool. I do really like, I do enjoy that. Like, watching people like especially I don't know it's just it's really cool yeah and you know we're, we're human we have emotions we are going to have bad days we are going to have days where man this was life is a little tougher today right or or this mm -hmm. season it might not be just today it might be I'm going through a tough season of life and the emotions are there mm -hmm. but it's recognizing that hey we don't have to blow up or let them rule us or, or control us um yeah. and once we reach that level of awareness, doesn't mean we're going to get it right all the time, but every time we get it right, it gets a little easier. Mm -hmm. Well, and that kind of brings me back to this, like this quote that I did see where it, it says, um, control art, alt delete, kind of like for a computer and, mm -hmm. uh, as control your thinking, alter your thinking and then delete negativity. And, um, I really like that. Like, I mean, I'm not in an office by any means, but it's just like that. I mean, even if you just think like control, alt, delete, like just delete all the bad things, you know, and it, it's, it's harder to do than you think. But at the same time, it's like, you know, there is always, my grandma would always say, find the, uh, kind of like find the sunshine at the end of the rainbow or like find the, find the one positive thing. There's always one, even if mm. you think that there's not, there's always one, like right, right at this moment. Um, a few a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, um, we had a really bad storm and my hail or my house, goodness gracious, my house got hit with hail. And oh, um, oh my goodness. And it was bad. It, it damaged the roof, the gutters, the anything you could think of. Also, it got my car and uh, oh. I got my windshield replaced like two weeks prior and it's got a big old crack in it and everything. And um I mean, the, even with all that, I'm like, okay, well, you know, at least I have a house, at least I have a car, you know, at least, um, at least the tornado didn't actually happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they're, they're, I mean, the hail sucks, don't get me wrong, but at least, you know, my house didn't get swooped up like the Wizard of Oz. Like, <laughs> so. Yeah. Learning to just look for the positive doesn't mean the negatives don't, aren't there or that they go away, but just not dwelling not mm -hmm. dwelling on them. Yeah. Uh, and, and something cool. I mean, you've been pretty accomplished on, on your journey in terms of, uh, you know, being able to take, kind of take control of your personal life and, and, and getting that house. Oh yeah. No, that's on that a little bit. That, that is probably my biggest accomplishment. And, um, 
I mean, aside from like Cooper, obviously, but um, he uh, or my uh, with the house, I bought it at twenty, and um, it that was also like through trials and everything like that. Like I mean, my, like I said, my mom was a single mom. You know, there was moments where we would kind of live in um, downer areas or like, you know, we would live with someone or have a roommate, you know? And um, so there was one point in time where we just weren't seeing eye to eye. And uh, I ended up at my grandparents' house and I lived there for a while. And um, I mean, there's a lot of thanks to them too. They helped Sure. us grow up they helped my mom be able to raise us you know and uh we we would be over there quite a little quite a bit you know or they'd pick us up from daycare and then mom would come pick us up and everything and uh but without me and my mom not seeing eye to eye in that particular moment and me going and living like I was good at saving money anyway because I really don't know why I think it was just like my I don't know. I don't really know where that came from, but I was really good at saving money. And um, so I had quite a little bit saved up prior to me and mom not seeing eye to eye. But then I went and lived with my grandparents and thankfully they were exactly what I needed. My grandma has been like my rock ever since I've ever since I've been alive. Like if I needed anything, go to grandma. If I if I needed to talk anything out, go to grandma. So it's like I lived there and thankfully they didn't Thankfully, they didn't charge me rent or anything. You know, I, <laughs> some some people are like, my grandma actually did say that. And I don't know if it was because she was trying to be hard on me or trying to make oh. sure that I was going in the right direction. But she's like, right. You no, know, we could have charged you rent. We could have charged you rent but we didn't <laughs> because we knew you were good at saving. And like, I think that because she even said she backtracked and was like, well, if we did make you pay rent, if we would give it all back to you anyway. But yeah. um. So it's like, I lived there and then, um, I can't remember the exact year, but I remember we both were, we we were just like, oh man, like I, I'm in this venture, I'm trying to buy a house. And they were there every single step of the way. They were like, okay, well, where do you want to live? I don't know. I don't want to go back to Wright City though. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, maybe O'Fallon. So we started looking around in O'Fallon and, um, I found this house and it happened to be right across the street from my aunt and uncle. And I was like, this is the one. So they helped me. They helped me buy that. But like I said, if I, if I didn't have that moment with my mom, like there's no way that I would have this house. I'd probably still be living in her basement, honestly, <laughs> because so, I, I like, I, I am a mom body. Like if, if my mom's not there, then I'm not there. Like I remember there was one summer they sent us to church camp. And my brother, my my middle brother, he was thriving. He had friends. He was going all over the place, having a great time. And every time I'd pass him, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm crying every night. Like, I need, to, be, I need to go home. And, um, and I mean, it was fun. But I just, I need to be close to my mom. And I realized that. And uh, But like I said, back to the whole thing. Like, if we didn't have those problems, there's no way that I would have this house. I probably would be living in her basement with Cooper. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Still in all, though, it's pretty cool. I mean, you took something that was adversity in your life. And I know that's that's tough. Right. But but you grew from it and you're like, I'm going to 20 years old buy your own. Like, that's pretty mature and pretty awesome. But it's pretty, pretty big deal. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm like, that's one of the things, too, that like when people are like, you own your house. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> like I, I really worked for this. Like, I mean, it took a lot of jobs and it took a lot of saving and it took a lot of um, it took a lot, you know, to buy a house at 20. I mean, even to the point that like if you were like so I live in Missouri and um, if if you buy a house at 20, they're not going to give you homeowners insurance. And that was another thing that like, while I'm trying to buy this house, I'm trying to build up my credit because who really has credit at 20 years old anyway. And and so, okay, well, I'm like, well, if I, if I have to have credit, then I have to work on that too. So I got a credit card and only get one. If you're going to get a credit card, do not get a bunch because, (laughs) I mean, at that point in time, it was, it was really good because I didn't have, I didn't have a lot of responsibilities. I had a car, which didn't need a car payment. So I just needed like insurance. 
and then it needed gas, you know, so there wasn't so many things that I could tack on to, but then after having the house, like, like my credit was really at the house, that's got it, and that's how they gave me the insurance. Well, they said they took a chance on me, which I believe they did, but um, mm. after that, get rid of your credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Because sounds like good advice. <laughs> my my grandma was like, Danielle, you don't want to be house poor. You don't want to be living in a house with just walls. And I'm like, that's fair. That is completely fair. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Well, well I'm going to. That is one of my biggest ones. Yeah. I mean, and, and you should. I love that that you've been able to accomplish that and that you realize that that's a big deal. So I love that. <laughs> I'm going to bring Mac back on because I, everyone who knows um, uh, us, Mac has been typically doing these interviews and I'm so excited that I got to be the one to do it today, but I know he's probably got some other questions. I'm going to bring him back and because okay. um, it is kind of, it was his podcast now today into our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see y'all over there making it happen. I like it. <laughs> Thanks for letting me back in, Rhea. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Glad to have you back. Welcome back. <laughs> Danielle, you killed it, girl. Oh, thank you. You you made it happen. I mean, that's that's some good stuff. And, and congratulations on that house and for being a saver and all that good advice you're giving folks, especially young people. So that's that's some good stuff. But I, I want to give you know, I'm all about the growth, the personal growth, the leadership stuff. So I I just listened to you. What do you think is different about your life because you discovered all this personal growth and leadership stuff, whether it's our stuff or somebody else's? What's what what's what's different? Why are you glad you jumped into this or got introduced to it? I just I feel a healthier and happier because I feel like with a better mindset, there's just more things that you can accomplish. Like I said before, it's easier to go back to the negativity and like the the crappy mindset and like, I mean, it's just, it's taken a lot of work to get to the mindset that I have. And it does, it just it helps you make it through the day, you know, instead of focusing on all the bad, you could be like, well, you know, at least, at least this, or at least that. And it's, it's very, it's very like, it's, it's just awesome. And then especially with having Cooper and like watching him realize that I've done some of the work, like, like I said before with the spilled milk, like he was kind of looking at me for a reaction and he didn't get it. And just watching him look for the reaction and not receive it and not get it. It just, it made me very proud. Like, you know, it, it's just a different, you just kind of have this different view of everything. And it's just, it's really cool. Like, to, to just know that you're actually putting in the work, that the the stuff that you're reading, you're actually absorbing it. It's not just in one ear, out the other. Like you're taking it in and it, you're applying it and it's, it's, it's getting poured into somebody else, especially a six-year-old. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Like, like Rhea mentioned, I mean, I'd give anything if, if, if I knew this stuff when, when my son was, was that age, but, but <laughs> I didn't, but we can help other people learn this stuff at, you know, at an early age, even before they have children, that, that'd that be the best part because you can get longer, longer time to work on yourself before they even show up. But, but that's phenomenal. You're doing that. And he's doing that. And I heard you talking about the school doing the, the seven habits with them. I think they call that seven habits for happy kid. I mean, the uh, leader within me, I think is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, the program. So, so what's, what's your one nugget of wisdom, any quotes that stand out or anything that, that you share a lot or, What's the number one thing you've learned? Something like that that you want to leave with folks? Um, the one thing that I always have is because, and I feel like it might just be like with me not, maybe maybe not having a lot of money. Maybe, I, mean, I don't know what the problem is, but sometimes I feel like all my yesterdays are, are heavy, you know? And so the one thing that I always say is yesterday is heavy, put it down. And, um, because sometimes your yesterdays can be really heavy. And like, you know, you don't have to, just because it was heavy doesn't mean you have to carry it with you. And uh, that's one of the things that as soon as I heard it, I was like, that's, that's the one. That's the one that I'm going to have. Because if, even if today's heavy, tomorrow doesn't have to be, you know, and I don't have to bring today into tomorrow. Like, just got to keep moving. That's good stuff. 
So is there anything that, that you want to say that Rhea didn't ask or I didn't ask? Anything uh, you'd like sharing? I I don't know. Uh I I think that it's really funny with uh with St. Peter's that uh so I I know I know that it's on the LinkedIn page for St. Peter's, but uh I rescued this cat from work and I we weren't really supposed to do that. And well, from, from the old, from the old standards and, uh, we weren't really supposed to do that, but I did, I brought it home and, uh, took care of it and everything. And, uh, I, I took it to the vet eventually to make sure like, okay, this, this cat can go to the vet and, um, and then it was chipped. And so it went and it found its owner and everything. And I'm still in touch with those people. But uh, I do think that it's funny because they were like, oh, you're not a cat person. You're not a cat person. No, no, I'm not a cat person. Now I have two cats. So I just thought, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was, I thought that was really funny. And I thought I'd share that because my son, he was like, so when are we going to get a cat? I'm like, we're not getting a cat. And then boom, we have two cats. <laughs> okay. All so, right. So one thing I, very random, but I thought that it was funny. <laughs> so, so you stepped out of line, do the right thing. So maybe in the old days you went, we're not supposed to do that, but you, you just couldn't help it. You had to do it. Yeah. Well, because every time I'd, I'd pass it and it would be like meowing at me and I'm like, I have to do it. Like I said, like I, I want to help people. I want to help animals. And I think that it's funny because Cooper's picked that up also. And, uh, Every time that we go anywhere, like we went to his baseball practice the other day and there was a dog in like terrible conditions, like chained up underneath a tree, everything. I'm like, oh, mm. Cooper's really sad. And he goes, so should we, should we save it? <laughs> 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 like We can't. That's literally somebody's dog. But I just, I think it's funny. Like he'll be like, mom, there's a cat. Let's go get it. Or let there, go get that thing. And I'm like, okay. You know, so it really, whatever we do really does resonate. And I just... I, that's the one thing that I've just really picked up on from reading all this stuff is that like they do absorb everything good and bad and hopefully more good than bad on Cooper's end because now there's, there's work on both, both sides. Yes. Someone's always watching, aren't they? Someone is always watching. <laughs> we don't get to decide if we want to be a role model or not. We already are. We get to mm-hmm. decide what kind do we want to be, right? Exactly. So I'm just curious, were you working out in the Recycle City when, when Elliot come out there and y'all did the big clean out and, and moved oh. the conveyors out and cleaned those conveyors and you were there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, no. That, uh, oh, you go, you go. Go ahead. No, that that was really cool. Like, that, I mean, I, I like to get down and dirty and everything, but like watching Elliot get in the pit with us, that's something that we would not have seen with the management that was there prior like they would have been just sitting there like probably leaning on a shovel or something like just watching like oh get get it done get it done and he's in there and he's he's filthy and he stayed till the very end like he was there yeah, for- he's, and he's he's what i call a big dog he's a big oh, yeah. boss <laughs> but he was working like everybody else right yeah maybe even harder than some of them because some of them were sitting there just in awe like what is he doing? Shouldn't he be in the office? And he wasn't. He was down in there. He was making things happen. And you guys, he saw that y'all needed some fans, that y'all had fans that didn't work. And you remember that? He went and got oh. some fans, like, right away. That He was building trust with you guys, right? Oh, yeah. There was a time when um, our, the thing that sucks up the tin, it's a magnet, and it goes in a circle, and it sucks it up and throws it into the bin. We were pulling off all the tin by hand. And, I mean, could you imagine, like, maybe – I mean, I don't know if this was around that time, but like Thanksgiving where you're using all kinds of cans, like green beans and corn. Can you imagine like pulling off a whole municipality's worth of tin and putting it in trash cans and then throwing it in? Well, Elliot got wind of that and he's like, "Uh uh-uh, we ain't doing this. We're going to do something different. And so then he went and he got it fixed like within, it felt like a day, but that's probably because picking off tin that much was pretty yeah. <laughs> that's awesome and he's been doing a he's been providing a good example of high impact leadership building oh. trust and modeling leadership how to lead with 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 moral authority not formal authority he's building oh. trust with you guys you know something go ahead i'm sorry i'm so yeah, sorry go ahead 
But like even with because whenever I applied for the water plant, him and Aaron, they both took me in there. And I was like, you know, if you guys interviewed me, I don't think that I would have this job because like I said, the 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 management was completely different. Like if you were to ask me how my interview went with the with St. Peter's um, initially, it it was completely a Cooper show. Every answer they were like, oh, well. Well, what about this? And I'm like, well, because my son does this or like, oh, well, because this and that. But it's all because of Cooper. And like, I was like, Elliot, you would have never hired me. And he kind of like, <laughs> he, he didn't say anything, but I was like reading his face. <laughs> but uh, so whenever I applied for that, I was like, I don't really know if I want to do it, but I do want to like entertain the thought of it and kind of see if that's something that would interest me, you know, and uh Every day, like they would sit down or not even sit down. Sometimes we would just be in the hallway and they'd be like, Danielle, name three characteristic traits of yourself or whatever a question would be. And I'm like, oh, okay," You know, and whenever I did that interview, they were like, that was fantastic. You know, you interviewed extremely well. And, you know, it's probably from your time being with the city. And in my head, I'm like, it's it's not. It's because actually my the people in charge of me have been interviewing me for like a month now and gave me like <laughs> a, a questionnaire sheet so I could practice with myself at home <laughs> that's phenomenal yeah they, they're doing a great job Aaron and Elliot are all of you are privileged to have those those folks as, as leaders they're, they're they're working hard on developing themselves they're growing all of you guys are growing not, nobody's there yet we're not there yet so I we're going to wrap it up, but I got to tell you, I learned something listening and watching you and you've done a great job, but you're bilingual too, like me. <laughs> me and you both speak country. <laughs> Cause I tell everybody we're, I'm bilingual. I speak English in country. I was like, Oh, Danielle's bilingual too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I, I went to Wright city and like, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm country at all. Like they have a little bit of that, like, twang some of them do <laughs> i like it <laughs> now you gotta go work on that <laughs> you like i didn't know i sound like mac you probably don't sound like me but you sound like country so i like it. i didn't realize i hadn't talked to you enough before to really realize it, that you, you kind of got a country girl sound you got a cowboy hat and some cowboy boots up there somewhere i do, I do. look <laughs> well, i don't even have that then yeah Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's phenomenal. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming and spending or investing some of your time with us today on a Sunday afternoon. You've done phenomenal. I knew you would. And I'm really, really proud of you. I hear a lot about you through Rhea. She's always bragging on you. But don't stop climbing, Danielle. You, you, your future is so bright, you, you don't even understand it. I'm telling you, that's, that's the truth. I mean, I didn't even discover this stuff till I was 39 years old. I mean, you've been doing it now for several years and you said you were 29, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, look, look at the head start. You got it on me. I mean, and, and you're smarter than me. So the world better watch out. No telling where you're headed. Cause, cause like you said, uh, women can do anything. I like that, that line you said there. So we're going to wrap it up. We really appreciate you being on the blue collar leadership uh, podcast and YouTube channel today. Yeah, thank you guys for inviting me. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you're if you're listening and you haven't ever watched any of the, the YouTube videos of this this uh real people getting real results series, be sure to go to uh youtube.com forward slash at blue collar leadership. You you can watch this this episode or or any of the other ones there. All right, talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.